Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good Monday morning. It is June 1st. Innovation at its finest. This story was on goodnewsnetwork.org, but originally appeared right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. A nurse in San Antonio who was just, oh, you know, overcome with emotion about all of her fellow healthcare workers running low on those um, masks that are certified to keep 95% of all bacteria. Yeah, the N95 out. ones. Yes. So she decided to put her skills at work and start making them herself. Tommy Austin uh, spends t her free time working on embroidery and quilting at her sewing machine. So even with all her skills and credentials, it was a challenge to design an equivalent or a more superior product to the more better, the better known N95 mask. She said her husband always said, if you can't find something and you can't buy something, then make it. And so she sat down and as you said, put her skills, which was not easy because it had to be a certain quality in order to keep out all of the bacteria and viruses and stuff that they need to. Well, yeah, and she she remembers her late husband telling her also the best AC filters, those electrostatic ones, which are a higher price, but they carry a charge that zaps more gunk from the air. So when Tommy went shopping for materials, she remembered the word electrostatic. So at about $25 each, she bought three different filter models, cut through the paper and wire frames, and she got to work. Biggest challenge, getting the mask to fit snug of the nose and mouth, not so tight that would damage the skin, and also had to leave room for carbon dioxide to escape. I've read it. It's being, I'm going to tell you a story about that. Don't let me forget before okay. we finish, but I want to finish this first. It took her 10 days to design the TM2020, which we assume means Tommy mask. Yep. It's right, and it only took 24 hours after the word got out from stations like KSAT for it to become an internet sensation. By the next day, her mass had been showcased by Fox News and the New York Post, and it went on from there. So they were inundated with requests for details, posted step-by-step -step instructions later that week. Tommy had only the instructions in her head at that point, but she did it, and now all over the world, people are using her masks. Yeah, they're getting requests from places like, what was it, South Africa mm -hmm. and Indonesia. It's amazing. So. Thanks for all of her concern for the nurses in need. She's making a difference all across the world. And after the rundown, you can tell us your story. Okay, deal. Here's the rundown. More protests from coast to coast. From Los Angeles to Boston, large crowds protesting into the night. New York seeing mostly peaceful protests, even as police announced nearly 800 arrests over the weekend. The NYPD says one out of every seven protesters who's been arrested has been from outside New York City. Intelligence officials say neo-Nazi and white supremacist groups are also trying to exploit the situation along with foreign groups like ISIS. With protesters gathering at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Friday. The president briefly took shelter in an underground bunker. It's unclear what specifically prompted the immediate move to the bunker. Some people tried their best to put things back together as soon as possible or at least eliminate some of the mess that was made. Private citizens along with city workers pitched in on that effort yesterday morning. That is Sheriff Chris Swanson in Flint, Michigan and he is a popular man this morning. He joined protesters rallying against police brutality after they invited him to walk with them. These officers in Orlando took a knee and held hands with young black men calling for justice. They say they share in the grief of George Floyd's death. The state trooper in Florida broke the line as protesters approached, walking up to a woman to give her a hug. He's one of many across the country acknowledging the pain and sending the message that we are with you. A video of white and black community members in Houston praying together in the neighborhood where George Floyd lived. White community members kneeled and asked for forgiveness of years of systemic racism. The 2020 hurricane season starts today. Forecasters predict it's going to be an above average year. The first American astronauts to launch from U.S. soil in nearly a decade are now on the International Space Station. For the first time, NASA astronauts entered the space station from a commercially made spacecraft. Hey, what do you have? Well, first of all, what a beautiful thing to watch that rocket take I know. off, right? It was great. So uh, she mentioned in the mass, she had to be very specific, tight enough to keep things out, but loose enough to where carbon monoxide could escape, right? Uh, dioxide. Dioxide. Because dioxide. Dioxide. if you don't allow that, it can create dizziness or headaches. Even worse, I saw a Facebook post. All of the workers who, grocery stores and stuff, who have to wear them all day long, mm -hmm. One lady said her daughter got seriously ill. She thought she had COVID-19 because it was all respiratory stuff. Turns out it was from the mask. She's mm. breathing in bacteria and carbon dioxide, and she has uh, damage to her lungs now. Really? Yeah. So it's something to 
make sure you wear it properly and also give your face a rest. Well, now that it appears we're settling in, obviously, for the long haul, face masks are probably going to be around for the foreseeable future. I guess it's time to start t talking about Safety. a better fitting mask. And the proper way to wear it, how often you should get a break from it, and right. all of those things. Just all those kinds of things. Yeah, and again, her mask was called the TM2020. Yes, I love it for Tommy Mask. Mm -hmm. Take you outside with live cam. Boy, it's a messy morning. It was a wet commute. We had some good heavy rain come through these, I, I call them sort of tropical downpours. There's enough moisture in the atmosphere where once these uh, showers and storms happen, they put down a lot of rain. And we saw that this morning. Let's take a look at the radar and we'll show you that uh, right now things are quiet here in San Antonio. But we do have some showers and storms building down there around Beeville. They're starting to push into Wilston and Atascosa counties. These are going to work their way slowly north and west, and we should see some more showers and uh, some pop up showers and storms today, depending on how that cluster kind of moves in. But you see the visible satellite picture and uh, we have plenty of clouds, so that'll keep temperatures down today. We're not expecting an overly warm day. Temperatures right now 68 Bernie State, 71 Boulevardy, 74 at Randolph in the forecast. Uh, calls for about a 60% chance of rain, even as we get into the afternoon. Of course, again, it depends on what that sort of cluster of showers and storms does, but we'll keep an eye on it. 82 degrees. We've also got some activity in the tropics we got to talk about, and we've got a junior meteorologist coming up here in a bit, so more to talk about, guys. We'll be back here in just a few minutes. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Justin. We still have some wet roads at 35 and I-37. Well, new this morning at 9, San Antonio police have arrested another person accused of damaging property downtown. 33-year-old Natalie Calderon was taken into custody and faces charges of criminal mischief. She's accused of damaging property at the shops at River Center around 6 o'clock Sunday afternoon. At least seven people were arrested over the weekend after protests over the killing of George Floyd turned vandalism into vandalism and destruction downtown. They are cha facing charges ranging from curfew violations to engaging in a riot. Other top stories that we're following today, we are still waiting to learn the name of the man killed early this morning on the city's east side. San Antonio police say the 40-year-old was shot around 9:15 last night in the 3400 block of Action Lane. That's between I-10 and I and Highway 87. Officers say a group of gunmen pulled up to the house and started shooting at the victim over a dozen times before driving away. Police tell us the victim was still alive when they arrived but died a short time later. Right now, investigators are still looking for the suspects. An update to a story we first reported on this morning. San Antonio police say a missing 53-year-old woman has been found safe. Officers have been looking for Depp Tai Nguyen since Sunday afternoon. She was reported missing after she left her home in the 700 block of New Braunfels Avenue and did not return. Police were able to locate her earlier this morning and they tell us she's okay. Well, if you're planning on riding a via bus uh, anytime soon, have your money ready. The company's fare relief period, which started in March, has ended and starting today, the company will begin collecting fare again. Passes and tickets can be purchased online through the ticket app or at ticket windows. VIA says health and safety measures, including enhanced and overnight cleanings and the limit on passengers, will remain the same. Only 16 people allowed on board at that time, and the essential service schedule will remain in place. More information, of course, on KSAT.com. Turning now to your morning headlines, more and more lawsuits are starting to be filed because of the coronavirus and some disturbing video out of Atlanta. Driver of an SUV loses her uh, brakes on the highway and an officer pulls off his daddy skills to help a little girl. David Sears, good morning, sir. Hi, David. Everybody needs a hug every now and then. That's we do. Truth. So especially in tough times. Yes, sir. We'll have a cute little hug for you in just a second. But first, you can probably expect to hear this type of news more and more often over the coming months. Lawsuits being filed against cruise ship companies because of deaths from COVID-19. The family of a 64-year-old Ronald Wong has filed a lawsuit against Carnival and Princess Cruise Lines. He was a guest on a trip last February that took him to Mexico. Now, while on the ship, he contracted the virus and died a month later in a California hospital. According to the suit, his family says that the cruise line should have known that a passenger on a previous trip on the same ship had the coronavirus. Wong was on that ship that ended up docking at the port of Oakland with 131 positive passengers on board. Five of those have died. Wong's wife also contracted COVID-19, but she recovered. This lawsuit is one of about a dozen filed by the cruise line passengers so far. I'm going to warn you that this video may be disturbing for some of you. This is an Atlanta Saturday night, two young college students in the car. They're surrounded by police, and then you can see both of them get tased. First, the young lady, then the young man. The police were pulling them out of the car after they tased him. They got him on the ground and then zip tied their hands behind their back. The two officers who fired their tasers have been fired. 
The mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottom, says she knows that the officers are exhausted, but that kind of use of force is not acceptable. The reason the two were stopped was unclear. Now, police were starting to enforce the 9 p.m. curfew. You saw pictures of the two officers that were fired just a second ago. The charges against the male suspect were dropped. Three other officers involved in that incident are now on desk duty. All right, let's take it to Ohio. This is dash cam video. You are watching a driver of an SUV pretty much out of control right here. The driver, at least she's got her flashers on. She's a 20 year old female, lost her brake. She was pushing the brake and nothing. She was called 911 in tears at the same time, doing a great job of driving. You saw her was able to pull off on the side of the road. Police officer was with her. That trooper jumped out of his car when that lady finally got a hold of 911. The dispatcher said, pull the emergency brake. So she pulled the emergency brake, slowed down. This, the uh, trooper was able to run up to the car. You know, the, the, the poor girl was freaking out, <laughs> out with all this going on. She did a great job. Look at her get around that traffic. Not bad, not bad at all. Trooper said, everything's okay. You're good, it's fine. She got the car off. All right, as we said, you know, everybody needs a hug now and then. We're on a Las Vegas highway. State trooper approaches the scene. The car smashed, airbags deployed. The family standing on the side of the road. A little five-year-old girl is crying while she's standing there. The officer comes up, and this is what the little girl does as he approaches. Thank you. You okay? Yeah. I'm okay. You okay? Okay. Oh. Just reaches out for the trooper and I need a hug. Everything's good. You're okay. Yes, I'm okay. We're all okay. How sweet is that? See, you can tell he's a daddy. Just the way he was Thank talking you. to her. You okay? You okay? Aww. Aww. <laughs> I'm okay. Cuteness alert. Cuteness alert. And just, just reaches out for him. I love that part. And he just picks her up and hugs her like a daddy would. Uh, we needed that on this Monday. Oh, yeah. More than sure. in recent memory. So, good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks, Thanks. David. Thank All you right. so much, sir. Right now, it's 9, 10, 76 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. The Girl Scouts of Southwest Texas have had to make some adjustments to its summer camps because of the pandemic. A look at how virtual summer camps will work. Thousands of people across the country have been taking to the streets for the last week to protest the death of George Floyd, but health experts are worried the demonstrations could res result in a bigger spread of coronavirus. CNN's Camilla Banal will have more on that coming up in the newscast. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are here at Cast Med High School. We are talking about recruitment, enrollment, and how you can still get your kids involved. I'll explain after the break. And stocks right now are up 21 points. We'll be right back. Welcome back, it's now 914. Cast Med is a unique school as part of San Antonio ISD that helps put students on the path towards the medical field. The school year doesn't start for another few months, but the school's recruiting. Max Massey joins us live from Cast Med. Max, you say you don't need to be in the SAISD uh, area or district to apply. You just need to live in Bear County, and we are joined here by Dr. Rodriguez, the principal here at Cast Med. Right off the bat, Dr. Rodriguez, what sets CASMED apart from other public high schools? Well, we are a brand new high school, not only here in the San Antonio Independent School District, but we're brand new in San Antonio. And what sets us, sets us apart is the fact that we are currently recruiting for ninth and 10th grade, and we have three major pathways. One of them is biomedical science. The other one is medical for any student that's interested in becoming a doctor, nurse, pharmacist, dentist, even a veterinarian. And also we offer the third pathway, which is for public health. One of the major things that sets us apart is the fact that we are dual language. Our, some of our students this past year were taking Algebra one and Geometry completely in Spanish, and we're moving those students up to taking Chemistry completely in Spanish. Because if you're gonna be a doctor, a nurse, a pharmacist in the city of San Antonio, or in South Texas, for that matter, you should be able to communicate in Spanish. Taking a look behind you, you have this chart with all of your community partners. You have much more than just hospitals here. How do you guys partner with, say, the food bank? Yes, we partner up with the food bank and with others that are not uh, hospital driven per se because we want our students to do volunteer hours and we want them to do service learning because once they become seniors and they start applying for college scholarships, that is what's going to give our students the upper hand in obtaining those scholarships. So volunteer service hours is really what we're focusing in because we don't want just kids who graduate to graduate with a strong focus on math and science, but to graduate kids with a heart so that they're able to give back to the community. So by partnering with other entities, 
we're trying to establish that as well. All right, Dr. Rodriguez, thank you so much. Guys, coming up at 9.30, obviously a unique curriculum here, but also some amazing technology that students can use. Dr. Rodriguez, what is the, uh, the amazing piece of machinery? It's called the Anatomage Table, which actually has scans of a real human body. Um, that students are able to use to learn more about the human body. Fantastic. We're going to take a look at that coming up at 930. Mark, Leslie. Max, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Max. We have had a lot of rain over the last few days. We had. We had a little break there Friday, Saturday. The downpour started showing up again yesterday, and it's looking like we are due for more today. Yeah, more downpours. And it's, it's not severe weather. It's just these, these good rain showers that put down quite a bit of rain, so it causes some problems on the roadways and stuff like that. Let's start with the radar. And uh, San Antonio is getting the chance to sort of clear out for the moment, but we've got some more showers building down there to the south and east. These are the ones we'll have to keep an eye on next few hours. These are the showers that pass through, and now these are just very light working towards Kerrville and then up and down I-35 down there near Pearsall. So uh, we'll take a little closer look at this activity here. Right around Beeville, that's where this he the heaviest. We've got some pockets of heavier rain there right around I-37. A few lightning strikes mixed in there, but mostly Again, this is just sort of that tropical rainfall that comes down in buckets. And we'll take a look at the uh, six-hour rainfall totals here. And they've been pretty impressive. Uh, we'll stop the motion, and uh, we'll take a look at some of the numbers here. These are radar estimates, so we're not talking uh, exact numbers here, but estimating close to an inch there on the west side of Bear County, east side of Medina County, even here around San Antonio, uh, seeing estimates of up to three-tenths of an inch, and that fell pretty quickly. So it made the morning commute a little more difficult for sure as you were driving into work. But we still could see a few more showers and storms as the day continues, scattered stuff. And as we look at the satellite picture, we've got uh, mostly cloudy skies here in San Antonio. So that's going to keep temperatures down quite a bit today, I think. 76 degrees at the airport right now, 73 Randolph, 76 in New Braunfels, 68 right now in Bernie Stage, and then some 70s down to the south. You see the expanse of the cloud cover. So uh, don't expect a whole lot of sun today. And here's one of our future casts. Uh, short range models here and it does continue to bring in these downpours and it's hard to sort of pinpoint when and where that will happen but mostly during the afternoon when you have the daytime heating and then we'll do it again tomorrow this is at three o'clock tomorrow but I don't think it'll be as widespread on your Tuesday so we're talking more of maybe a 40 percent chance versus a 60 percent chance for today we'll call for a 60 percent chance three o'clock through five o'clock uh, even around lunchtime, though, have the umbrella with you because we certainly could see some of these downpours. High temperatures will be around 82 degrees. Meantime, let's go to the tropics. So we've got uh, Mexico here, the Yucatan Peninsula, and then we go into the Gulf of Mexico here. Hurricane Center's just updated this. They think there's an 80% chance of development within the next two days with this system. And this is what was left of a Pacific system that crossed over Mexico here and is now emerging in the Gulf of Mexico. Water temperatures are plenty warm. We're talking low 80s here, so there's fuel for this to work with. And so that is of some concern, but what I'll tell you is right now the models have, well, they don't have a handle on this. We don't have any sort of center of circulation. It's, it's gonna be a while before we get a general idea here where this is going to move, but we do think there will be some development here. And as always, uh, we've got to watch this uh, as we go forward in time. Uh, real quickly, the upper level winds show that our little disturbance here that's bringing all the rain starts to move away. High pressure builds in. Hey, Thursday does show some showers here, but I think Thursday primarily will be dry, and that'll be the case into the weekend. And then the models start to indicate that some of that activity starts to move into the central part of the Gulf of Mexico. That would be very late in the weekend. Again, we don't have a great idea of what's going to happen there, so we just have to sort of wait and see, but we'll certainly keep you posted on what happens. Forecast, 82 degrees today, 86 Tuesday, 40% chance of rain, 20% chance on Wednesday, and then things dry out to Thursday, Friday, and into the weekend, although on Sunday we will have to begin to watch uh, what's going on down there in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, we have some junior meteorologists to talk about today. This is exciting. Luke and Jake, you might have seen these guys before. I think they've sent in a video previously. Okay. Let's take All a right. listen. To the weather report. I'm Jake, your weatherman. High is 96 degrees. That's hot. Low, 62 degrees. The wind is 15 miles per hour southeast. Uh, 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 uh. There's a 40% chance of rain overnight. I'm Luke, and I'm your Ashna. I'm just kidding. I'm your enemy. 
Yesterday there was a new moon. I can't see it at all. On Monday, Venus will be super bright. Back to you, Jeek. Oh, thanks, Luke. I'm Jake. This is the weather report. These cast of characters. I'm they drawing. are adorable and how appropriate to do the shark and the astronaut. I was waiting for them to say, and our wind chimes are going like crazy. Yeah, man, it was. They <laughs> are cute as can be. Yes, and we've got so many more lined up. If you've sent some in, I promise we're going to get to you. We're going to show all of them. We appreciate all the submissions. And you can also submit your uh, your junior weatherman, junior meteorologist, on our KSI Kids page. Okay. And, and to your email. Yes, that's all right. correct. And we have his personal and, and professional email coming up later in the newscast. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Summer usually means summer camps for lots of kiddos, but because of the pandemic, things might look a little different this year. How the Girl Scouts virtual summer camp will work. Coming up. Uh, summer is upon us and the kiddos will need to keep busy, whether that's virtually or through other activities. The Girl Scouts of Southwest Texas have plenty of options for your children through their summer camp options. The group is providing virtual summer camp for all girls that are in kinder all the way through 12th grade. It brings components of a traditional summer camp experience to families and the comfort and safety of their own homes. Participants will receive a virtual camp activity pack delivered to their homes. Prior to the first day of each session, each activity pack will have great appropriate program supplies for all activities that week. Our job is to be here for our girls, whether there's COVID-19 or not. Our job is to continue developing our girls. So uh, this happened, we thought, what else can we do to provide that summer experience to girls? We do have a, an award-winning curriculum. So we wanted to make sure the girls got those skills that otherwise they wouldn't get if they don't come to summer camp. If you would rather have your child attend a physical summer camp, the organization has limited spots still available for their away camp and day camp, but they will be following social distancing guidelines. You can find links to register on ksat.com. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Spurs guard Lonnie Walker took to the streets of downtown San Antonio this weekend to help clean up efforts after several businesses were damaged during protests. RJ Marquez joins us from home with details. Another night of protesting and unrest in cities across the country last night, all sparked by the killing of George Floyd. CNN's Camilla Bernal is live in Minneapolis to break down the very latest next. Checking the roadways as, nope, we'll be back. Welcome back. Your time now, 930. More protests and more violence last night in cities across the country with dozens of cities, including San Antonio, imposing nighttime curfews and declaring a state of emergency. All of this sparked by last week's killing of George Floyd while he was in Minneapolis police custody. CNN's Camilla Bernal is live in Minneapolis with the latest this morning. Yeah, Mark, Leslie, good morning. It was a calm night compared to what we were seeing over the weekend. A lot less violence and a growing memorial. Let me show you the intersection of where George Floyd had that horrific encounter with police. Uh, we saw a group, maybe about two dozen people who were here overnight who wanted to defy that uh, curfew order. And so they just sat in this intersection throughout the entire night uh, praying and really just coming together. Now we're just starting to see more and more people come, but we do expect this crowd to get even larger because George Floyd's brother is expected to come here. This is the first time that he's going to do so. They want the focus to be on George Floyd and not on the violence. It was another night of protest and unrest in cities across the country with incidents of violence from New York City to Los Angeles. We stand for the ones who's been knocked down, the ones who can't stand up no more because they don't have a voice anymore. All sparked by the killing of 46-year-old George Floyd, who died in police custody, pleading for his life as an officer well, kneeled on car, his man. neck. At least 40 cities have enacted nighttime curfews, and more than a dozen states have deployed the National Guard. Go inside now! Get in the hell! <laughs> but not all demonstrations have been violent. In Minneapolis, demonstrators gathering at the intersection where Floyd encountered police to remember him. The Minneapolis police chief also took a knee at the site and acknowledged police needs to do better. 
Our community members need to know that the men and women that put this badge on, that they are doing so in service to them, and they should not, and they should not have to doubt, they should not have to doubt the integrity and, and if they're going to be treated in a compassionate and professional way. And the police chief also saying that all four officers involved in this bear the same responsibility. That is, of course, something that a lot of the protesters want to hear. But more than hear it, they want to see this become a reality. And what they see as justice is charges for all four of those officers who were involved in the killing of George Floyd. Mark Leslie. Well, Camilla, with thousands of people demonstrating in cities all across the country, are health officials concerned that this will cause an increase in the spread of coronavirus? Leslie, they're very concerned, both here and around the country. But health and local officials here say that they expect a spike in the number of cases because of the fact that so many people are out doing exactly what health officials were saying not to do. People are oftentimes not wearing face coverings. They're gathering in large groups, definitely more than 10 people. And a lot of times they're very close together. So it is all the things that officials have been telling us for about two months not to do. And so everybody here is, of course, worried about what could happen in terms of COVID-19. But they're also uh, saying that they're going to continue to do this. A lot of the protesters say that despite the health risk, they're going to continue to come out until they see justice. So it's a difficult balance for a lot of these politicians and local leaders as they say they understand why people are out protesting, but also say uh, that people really need to be careful so that they're not uh, in getting other people to get this virus that could also be deadly in some cases and that is also affecting the black community in disproportionate numbers. So that is the concern from both health experts and local government leaders. All right, seeing as Camilla Bernal live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thank you, Camilla. Stay safe. Let's take you outside right now with live cam bring. Justin Horn into the conversation, and is this pretty much what we're going to be seeing all day? Pretty much. I mean, you see the uh, the clouds, little low hanging clouds here. We got a lot of rain earlier this morning. If you were uh, commuting into work around 6 a.m. or so, it's good downpour. That has moved along, but we've got more showers on the way down to our south and east. Let's look at the radar. You see Beeville really getting. Uh, some good rain right now. You know what? That's going to add up. These are very efficient rain producers. So uh, once these move over top of you, you're going to pick up quite a bit of rain. Uh, you also see there's one little thunderstorm there uh, north of Katua. Uh, that's not moving very much. So again, if you get stuck underneath one of these downpours, expect some pretty good rainfall totals. 69 degrees right now in Comfort, 71 Boulevard, 73 Randolph, 75 in Pleasanton. Mostly cloudy skies there. And no surprise, mold still in the high category. It's at 7,910. It's probably not going to drop much considering we've got more rain in the forecast today. About a 40% chance noontime, 60% chance this afternoon. Temperatures, because of the cloud cover, stay right there in the low 80s, so not too bad. We've got, again, some tropical weather to discuss. We'll have more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Guys? And let's check the roads at TransGuide. Things are fairly dry right now at that last camera shot out there on I-10 West. There's a little bit further down the interstate at Callahan and uh, not too far away, I-10 at Wurzbach. Dry for now and uh, one more shot there. In the last half hour, we introduced you to CastMed. CAST stands for Centers for Applied Science and Technology. It is a free public school. Any high school student who lives in Bear County can apply to. The idea is to help students advance in the path towards a medical career. Max Massey joins us live from CastMed. And Max, there's a different curriculum and also unique technology involved, right? Yes, that is right. I'm going to just go right to this. This is the Unatomage. And take a look, guys. This is amazing. It is... I don't even know how to describe it. I guess it's a super interactive tablet that you can click on parts of the human body. And it just, this is just one of the applications. It's very complicated. To help explain it even more, the principal of CASMED, Dr. Rodriguez, for people watching, please give them a better explanation of what this is than I did. Absolutely. So this is the Anatomatch table. It's a table that's utilized in our biology and in our 
bioscience course to teach our students the anatomy of the human body. Um, we use it specifically here because we want to provide our students with one of the best educations possible in the San Antonio Independent School District as well as here in our school. Um, actually, it spins the body. It actually also allows you to name any part of the body just by tapping on it. It's very, very detailed. It zooms in, it zooms out. It'll spin the body for you so that you can see any side of the, of the body. Um, our kids love it. Our teachers love it. It's, it's like nothing we've ever seen before here in our school. You were telling me that it's mostly colleges that have this type of equipment. Exactly. Uh, we know that the universities here, some of the universities as well as some of the community colleges do have an anatomy tables, um, but we are one of the few schools that actually has one in the high school. Dr. Rodriguez, thank you so much. And guys, we are talking about enrollment and recruitment here at CASMED. There is still time if you are interested to get your kids in for the fall. We have all that information. Just said to KSAT.com. Mark, Leslie. All right, thank you, Max. Thank you so much. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. You knew this? I knew that, because my best friend growing up, yeah. skinny, 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 could eat whatever she wanted, never had to worry about it. Never gained a pound. Well, apparently, they, scientists have discovered the so-called skinny gene. Scientists from Austria, Canada, and Estonia, of all places, say that lower or deficient levels of the gene anaplastic lymphoma kinase, or ALK, are significantly linked to skinniness and bodily resistance to weight gain. I'm impressed. Did you practice that? I did. I did medical school for like a day and then not for me. No, you didn't. All right. right. Anyway, so the study is uh, novel due to the fact that it focuses specifically for the gene linked to thinness. They sampled more than 47,000 people. The authors performed a series of genome-wide association studies and compared especially thin people's genes to people of average weight and they were able to pick out the ALK. Now, up until now, ALK has really only been known for the role it plays in some cancers as it tends to mutate in numerous forms of cancer. That being said, uh, its physiological purpose has always remained a bit of a mystery. So to test their theory, the team performed an experiment in which they deactivated that ALK gene in a group of mice. Aha! Uh -huh. To their surprise, the mice immediately became skinnier despite continuing the same activity level and the same diet. That's right, and the results similar when uh, were found in AOK genes were inhibited in a group A fruit flies as well. So now they said the results highlight the important therapeutic potential of inhibition of ALK, so maybe they'll have a skinny pill one day, everybody. We can only hope. We can. Right now we are at 939. 76 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. San Antonio photographers offering free sessions to teachers and their families. RJ Marquez is live with that and more trending stories coming up next. Glad you're back this morning on KSAT.com. The Spurs fan favorite assists with cleanup efforts downtown. Plus how local teachers can get a free photo session. RJ Marquez joins us live from home with those stories and more. Hi there, RJ. How are you? Good morning, RJ. Good morning, guys. I'm doing great. Hope you guys are doing well. Also, it's been uh, it's been a little while since I've uh, been able to talk to you guys, and I'm glad to uh, see that you guys are doing good. And it's good to see yeah, you, sir. You. Yeah, definitely, guys. Miss you, too. Um, so let's go ahead and start, first of all, with uh, Lonnie Walker. So throughout the pandemic and the events from this weekend, our Spurs have really stepped up to help the community, and that was definitely the case yesterday morning. Uh, Spurs star Lonnie Walker was part of several people that poured into downtown San Antonio to help clean after businesses and other property, of course, was damaged and vandalized Saturday night. Uh, Walker handed out water bottles to police officers and volunteers. He also helped paint and scrub over graffiti that was spray painted on walls and windows. So Lonnie said he just wanted to spread some positivity and good vibes and just to let the community know that he is with them and that he hears them and he uh, wants to just be a part of the San Antonio culture and part of uh, helping people out in general. Yeah, no sooner did this make KSAT.com. It wound up on ESPN and a couple other sports outlets as well. It's great to see. Yeah, great stuff, guys. And Lonnie's not the only one. DeJounte Murray recently donated a bunch of shoes to kids in his hometown area, Seattle. Uh, Rudy Gay donated $50,000 to healthcare workers in Baltimore. And of course, all the things that Patty Mills has done as well uh, since the pandemic started. So a lot of great stuff uh, going on with the Spurs right now. Well, so we already loved our guys and we love them even more. That's exactly. exactly. Right. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys, uh, moving on a little bit here. So over the past month, a San Antonio photographer has been offering high school seniors 
seniors free quick take portrait sessions, but now he's giving back to teachers. Hayward God Photography wants to acknowledge the incredible work teachers have done throughout the school year. So for the next two months, God will offer complimentary family portrait sessions to teachers. We have his website linked to our story on ksat.com. Keep in mind, spaces are starting to fill up fast because uh, we posted this story a few days ago. The portrait session can be used in any way the teacher chooses. And uh, it's really kind of hard to believe, guys, the way that teachers sort of adjusted on the fly to kind of keep students engaged, to keep their study plans uh, set for the rest of the year. And uh, I think during this pandemic, we've really seen just the, the value of having, uh, of having teachers and being there for our kids. Well, they deserve it. We, we wholeheartedly agree. What else yeah. is uh, up on ksat.com? <laughs> Yeah, guys, Krispy Kreme, all right, Krispy Kreme, good stuff here, is taking National Donut Day to another level. The company is offering free donuts starting today through Friday in a week-long celebration for National Donut Day. So participating locations will offer one free donut per customer per day. The offer is not valid for delivery, so they will not deliver the donuts to you. Uh, the chain said that the concept of time has been a blur over the past few months. You could definitely kind of agree with that. So they're just extending National Donut Day to a week-long event. San Antonio has four Krispy Kreme locations. So I would just call ahead and make sure that they are taking part in this offer before you head out and try and pick up a uh, free donut. So pretty cool stuff. Sounds like a sweet deal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, speaking of days of the week, let's look at some other national days that we have here. Today is National Say Something Nice Day and National Olive Day. And uh, olives, I found out, was some of the oldest fruits in the world. So pretty interesting stuff there for olives. Uh, tomorrow is National Rocky Road Day. Wednesday is National Rainy Day. Thursday, National Cheese Day. Friday is the actual National Donut Day. So that's really kind of uh, the day that donuts get celebrated. And Gingerbread Day as well. Don't forget about gingerbread. Um, Saturday, of course, is June 6th. We honor the Allied forces who fought on D-Day in 1944. And Sunday is National Cancer, si Cancer Survivors Day, which is the first Sunday of of All right, 76th anniversary of the invasion of the Normandy beaches on D-Day. Hard to believe. Yes. RJ, so good to see you again. Yeah, great to see you guys too. Take care. All right, thanks, RJ. We'll do lunch soon. All right, now 947. Justin Horn joins us to talk about the forecast. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good weekend? I did, and I got to tell you, RJ just killed me there with the pictures of those donuts. Oh, they look mm. good. Something yeah. about the donuts this morning. Just, we need that skinny pill. <laughs> really good. So we can eat all those donuts. Yes. Time to eat the donuts. A lot of donuts. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the radar, guys. We've got some uh, showers and storms out there. It was a busy morning on the roadways. We had uh, quite a bit of rain, at least in spots. So now we're getting a break here in San Antonio and we're seeing some of that activity starting to blossom there down to the south and east. So this is an area we'll keep an eye on as it works a little bit closer to our area. We can get some more rain out of this. We're also seeing a little thunderstorm down there around Katua. So let's zoom in on that uh, little cell there. And uh, actually, we're going the wrong way. Eh, we'll get there eventually. Uh, that, wow. Now we just got the earth. We really zoomed out. It's like uh, we're doing SpaceX here. We'll get there. Just bear with me. We got some new equipment here. So. Justin. I'm telling you, this is this is we're getting a workout. Uh, there we go. So uh, there's that <laughs> cell around Katua right along I-35. Not a lot of lightning strikes with that, but it is going to put down some heavy rain if you're just west of town there. Uh, could cause a little bit of street flooding. And then, man. That's not right either, but uh, we're sort of leaning now. Uh, we got some showers, storms there around Beville. These are working off to the north and west, and uh, those will also work their way towards San Antonio. So bottom line here is we're expecting some downpours here and there today. 70 degrees at Bernie State, 69 Comfort. We're at 73 Del Rio, 72 Carrizo Springs. And as we look at the dew points, and there is no change here. I mean, dew points are going to stay high. It's going to stay extremely muggy today. There's plenty of moisture in the atmosphere, so that's why these showers and storms are such efficient rain producers, and that's why there could be a little bit of street flooding, depending on sort of where these showers and storms sit. So uh, the latest computer model does take some of that activity into San Antonio. It may weaken a little bit as it does, but even around 3 o'clock, we're expecting scattered downpours, and some of those downpours could contain some heavy rain. Uh, as we get into tomorrow, there's still going to be those downpours around. The simple level low that's behind this is uh, shifting away, but they're still going to be there. And I, I just think tomorrow will be a little less in the way of activity, a little less coverage. Forecast for today, about a 40% chance at noontime. We'll call for a 60% chance at 3 and 5 o'clock. Keep in mind, not everybody's going to get rain today. It'll be hit or miss. It's not going to be raining all day or anything like that. 
Um, but uh, temperatures will stay down a little bit because of the cloud cover. Only 82. Okay, we've got some interesting weather going on in the tropics. Uh, this is a, a system that started in the Pacific. Right now it's over land. It's over the Yucatan, but we're expecting this to move out into the Gulf of Mexico. And there's about an 80% chance of development next couple of days, at least according to the Hurricane Center. Uh, so as it emerges into the Gulf of Mexico, a lot of the models have it just sitting here for a while. And then from there, it's really sort of a guess at where it's going to go. It's, it's just too early. We don't have any sort of circulation center of development here or center of circulation. So we've got to wait and see. But we'll keep you posted. As always, we want to keep a close eye on this because it is the Gulf of Mexico. It could potentially have some impacts down the line. We'll see. Uh, if we do get a name storm, be crystal ball that would be the next one and then dolly and edward you see the list there uh, as we look at the upper level winds next few days that upper level low as i mentioned moves away high pressure really starts to get in control of our weather thursday and even into the weekend so that'll keep things fairly dry minus a couple coastal showers but as we get into sunday uh, we could be looking at the tropics to see what's going on with that system. Okay, 86 tomorrow, 40% chance of rain, 20% chance on Wednesday, and look for things to dry out. It'll be much warmer as we get towards the end of the week and into the weekend. We'll be right back. He immigrated from Cuba to the U.S. at 13 years old and has overcome language barriers, a near-death accident, being far from home, and now he's headed off to college. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, how a program at East Central ISD has helped this great grad hone his skills for his future career. And one last look at the forecast, 82 degrees today, about a 60% chance of scattered downpours. We'll do that again tomorrow, a little bit less of a chance, and then things dry out. As we finish out the week, temperatures warm up too. All right, we have another pricey Lego kit to you tell what, you about. You know what, Mark? Yes. I'm going to let you take this one. Why? Because this just seems like right in your wheelhouse. Oh, you think so? so? Well, wheelhouse, see, get it? I don't even know if I'd spend this on a Lamborghini made out of Legos. I mean, we're talking $380 here. It's You're expensive. Taking, yeah, it is. It's a one-eighth scale model of the Lamborghini Scion FKP. 37. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's the latest addition to the Lego Technique kits, the first hybrid supercar by the famous Italian car maker. Although there's no electric motor inside the model, it does reward builders with a V12 engine that has movable pistons. It also and has more than that. It has a lot more than that. A four-wheel drive powertrain with active pushrod suspension, Mark. Cool. And even a functional eight-speed sequential gearbox that actuates via the steering-mounted paddles. Oh, but wait. There is also a special window underneath the car to view the gears at work. Uh, also includes an adjustable spoiler that can be lowered for those intense races in the living room. <laughs> Matching golden, golden rims and an overnight bag under the hood. Now, the frunk, oh. as it's called, also contains a unique serial number inside for unlocking exclusive online content. So that's the trunk up front, right? The frunk? Yeah, and it's more affordable than the car that's $3.6 million. So this is only 360. Three, three, yeah, three, something like that. They're gonna be available June 1st if you wanna spend that kind of money on, yeah. on Legos. That's, good. that's today. That would be Thanks today. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Uh, it took like five people.